Assalamu alaikum everybody and um, welcome to this lecture on the origin of the Shia. This channel is dedicated mainly to deal with, to deal with the Twelver Shia. So where did they come from? Is, that is a really good question. A lot of people don't know uh, where these sects came from, how they evolved and emerged. And uh, so I thought it was a good idea um, to uh, discuss this matter based on the specialized uh, books that are popular in the field, especially the books of Firoq, um, that discuss um, how these sects emerged, how these sects uh, later progressed, and why do we have what we have today. Um, so, uh, we'll begin the first uh, lecture. We're going to talk about the Shia from the time of the Prophet وسلم, until maybe about the year 120, 122, something like that. And we're talking about Hijri. Um, so let's begin by defining what the word Shia means or what the word Shia means. Shia simply is an Arabic word and it means uh, partisans of, proponents of, supporters of, and uh, after off, it's a blank, dot, 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 you fill in the blank. So um, in our days, obviously, when you say Shia, it refers only to the Shia of Ali. And that's what they call themselves, Shia to Ali. They'll tell you Shia to Ali, the supporters of Ali, the, 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 the partisans of Ali. But back in the day, back in the time uh, of, of early Islam, if you say Shia, no one would understand that you're talking about specifically the Shia of Ali. Um, because a lot of people had Shia, Uthman had a Shia, Ma'awi had a Shia, Ali had a Shia, Abdullah ibn Zubair had a Shia, and then, you know, the Shia of Uthman are called Uthmaniyya, or Uthmanis, the Shia of Abdullah ibn Zubair are Zubairis, uh, Shia of Ali are Alawis, um, uh, Amawis are, you know, so, so, so it's a, a work like that, so, um, but the Shia, uh, later developed into something more religious, especially the Shia of Ali. And, and that's why um, we don't talk about those other types of Shia today, because those other types of Shia were simply political uh, movements, and they never really turned into a religious sect. Um, uh, only this, only Ali's Shia developed um, a religious sect, and, and um, that's why they um, still lasted until our days, obviously, and, and uh, as a religious movement. And... Um, they are known popularly as the Shia. Stage one, let's begin with the um, the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he passed away on 11th Hijri. And uh, the Muslims in his time were essentially all the followers of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi They were all the supporters of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So therefore you could say all the Muslims were the Shia of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You can say that. There were no sects, there were no schisms. Um, uh, obviously, um, towards the end of the Prophet's life, uh, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, uh, some companions, some of his disciples, some of his students, some of his companions, they stood out among others as having, you know, great leadership skills. Maybe the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam favored some of them and, and would appoint them, usually in positions of authority. And they had merit and they had seniority. So some of the younger companions or uh, the companions of a lower, um, let's say, rank would look up to them and, and, and they would, you know, there would be, some of them would get along a lot more uh, than others. Uh, for example, um, Khalid bin Walid and Ali bin Abu Talib uh, never got along that much because we're, they were both technically warriors and they were both on opposite sides of the battle back when Khalid was uh, from among the pagans. And then when Khalid became a Muslim, him and Ali were kind of competitors, in a sense. Each one wanting to prove himself, each one wanting to please the Prophet So, so yeah, obviously you had Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, who really liked uh, Umar al-Khattab. Um, you had Salman, who liked uh, Abu Bakr and Ali a lot. You had uh, Khalid bin Walid, we talked. He, for example, he didn't get along with Ali, but he really liked uh, Abu Bakr. Uh, to the extent where um, after the Prophet ﷺ passed away, Khalid was referred to as from being from the Shia of Abu Bakr. Still though, in the time of the Prophet, there was no such thing. These were mainly um, just really subtle uh, relationships that everybody had without uh, the complexities of, of different sects or different uh, political movements within Islam that did not exist. 
Everybody obviously worshipped the exact same way the Prophet Sallallahu did. Um, there were no um, rituals that you, some of the rituals you see the Shia in our days, uh, for example, um, uh, crying on Ashura. Uh, it was never reported in any book of history, in any book of, of, of uh, biographies, of the, that they would sit on the day of Ashura of every year and cry. This simply did not exist. Um, it was never um, transmitted from, from any of the companions or any of the... That, that they used to, for example, seek um, the intercession of the 12 Imams, such as the 12 or Shia today. This did not exist. Uh, we all know the individuals who used to make Adhan in the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi the call to prayer, uh, Bilal and Abu Mahdura and others. And then, uh, nobody really included Ashhadu uh, Anna Ali and Waliullah in the Adhan. Uh, this was not there. So everybody pretty much more or less worshipped the exact same ways, even though fiqh was not as codified as it is today with the, you know, the four famous um, Sunni schools of fiqh. Still, um, there was no differences in the sense that everybody had the same exact belief.